Till next time, goodbye everyone. This week on Healthy Living, Nigeria warns citizens against consuming animal hides following anthrax outbreak. What is anthrax and how concerned should we be? Ghanaian veterinarian Mabel Abudu has some answers. And it's used in everything from diet sodas to chewing gum, but it could be causing you serious health problems. Plus, unique smart toilets bring continuous health monitoring to a new level. These stories and more in this edition of Healthy Living. Hello and welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Lenore Moudou. An outbreak of anthrax is raising concern in countries in West Africa. A zoonotic and bacterial disease, anthrax is transmitted from animal to humans and is caused by the bacteria Bacillus anthracis. According to the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, anthrax can be found in both wild and domesticated animals such as cattle, goats, horses and deer. The bacteria, which exists as spores, is present in the soil, wool, or hair of infected animals. When anthrax spores get inside a person's body, they can multiply, produce toxins, and cause severe illness. In humans, anthrax manifests itself in three distinct patterns, cutaneous, gastrointestinal, and inhalation. Ghana already has confirmed cases of anthrax in the country. Nigerian authorities are now urging their citizens to halt consumption of cooked animal hides, a delicacy also known as pomo. Gibson Emeka has this story from Abuja, Nigeria. Modesta Oluchuku, a Nigerian mother of four, is a skilled home cook. Her shopping list always contains food made of cowhide and other skins. Locals call it pomo. But Oluchuku says she has cut down on her favorite protein amid a heightened fear of anthrax, which broke out in northern Ghana, which borders Togo and Burkina Faso. Nigerian health experts are already sounding the alarm that cowhide can carry potentially deadly bacteria. I've not, eat, I've not stopped eating pomo. I'm, I'm still using pomo, but not always, because sometimes beef meat used to be expensive. But pomo will be more cheaper, so I have to go for pomo. Anthrax is found in wild and domestic hoofed animals. Humans are usually exposed to it through handling animals or animal hides. Untreated, it could cause severe illness and even death. The risk of infection is high in Nigeria, where animal hides are a cultural delicacy. Since the outbreak in Ghana, the Nigerian government is doubling efforts to prevent the disease from gaining entrance, says Dr. Regina Dunugba, the Federal Capital Territory Director of Veterinary Services. Uh, we trade with Ghana, so the possibility of coming is very high. Coming to Nigeria is very high, so we need to promptly alert the stakeholders, the livestock dealers, the butchers. Jabril Mohammed, a cowhide trader, says the demand for pomo in local markets has begun to slow since the government's warning. I noticed that people have reduced buying pomo, not like before. I think in the last two, three weeks now, the patronage is a little bit low now. Anthrax symptoms include mild cough, fever, muscle aches, and severe lung problems. Although no case has been recorded in Nigeria yet, Dr. Jekyll Orji, who speaks on public health matters, has called caution to, to make sure that people are fully aware and preventive this thing they should take and most importantly to advise people not to eat bush meats and one more anthrax spore vaccine is the cheapest and easiest way to prevent the disease in livestock the government is urging farmers to inoculate their animals to prevent the disease from establishing itself in the country 
how concerned are you about anthrax considering the outbreak in Ghana? And what measures would you be willing to take to avoid the disease? Here are some reactions from Nigeria. So from what I know, the little knowledge I have about anthrax is something that um, emanates from the soil and uh, mostly affects wild animals. And that's why they are telling us to avoid eating pomo or hides <laughs> that we usually call pomo here. So that, that's what I know about the anthrax. Yes, I'm concerned about it. Why? Because majority of Nigerians actually uh, consume uh, animal skin, which we popularly call pomo and also uh, other bush meats. So I'm concerned about that. And uh, so far, so good. There has not been any awareness or enlightenment as to the fact that Nigerians should actually stay away from eating this uh, part of uh, this particular animal skin. Of course, I should be concerned, but to my to be candid with you, I have not stopped eating pomo. I ate pomo yesterday, and I hope to keep eating pomo. What gives a Nigerian man joy is to see, no matter the situation, is to find assorted in his meals, which include pomo. So how can you stop me from eating pomo when the outbreak is in Ghana? I would like uh, uh, the government to put in more measures to make sure uh, they try and regulate either the, the meat uh, from coming to the market or either the meat uh, from reaching uh, those places. Uh, uh, the sensitization is not, of course, the awareness is not much over there. Because if you ask us to stop eating pomo, I wonder how many, in generality, uh, we'll be able to just, uh, with the nick of time, stop eating pomo. Dr. Mabel Abudu is Regional Veterinary Officer in Ashanti, Ghana. She tells us more about the threat of anthrax and what you need to know. Uh, naturally, when you go to endemic areas, you may find this uh, anthrax spores living naturally in the soil. And so when the animals go for grazing, that is why they come in contact with the spore, the anthrax spore. For the animal, normally, uh, you realize that there's a sudden death and then you may also uh, realize that uh, blood will be oozing from the natural orifices and it doesn't clot. So the human, it depends on the uh, mode of uh, transmission. If it's through inhalation, you may have uh, signs, you may develop signs, it will come and disappear and reappear. You also have a pain in your chest and then your lungs will be affected, the lymph nodes will be affected. If it is the digestive system, you also have a, a pain in the stomach, your stomach will swell, you'll be vomiting blood, there's diarrhea. And then if it's also through the skin, you have raised bumps, later on develop into blisters. And at the center of it, you have a black you know, point at the center. Prevention measures are many. For instance, if there's an outbreak, as it happened in Ghana, we place ban on movement on animal and animal products. And immediately vaccinations are, are, do happen, or vaccinations are organized. So all the area, the animals in the area are, vac are vaccinated. And then the other preventive measure is also this education that we are doing. We have to let people know that first of all, it is not advisable to slaughter a sick animal and not uh, even, uh, I mean, consuming of a dead one. It's it just not uh, acceptable anyway. And sometimes we also have beliefs. People have certain beliefs. They think that um, uh, when they cook the meat and then they put certain herbs on the meat, as the vapor goes up, uh, the anthrax spores are going up. It is not, it is not like that. They need very strong heat to be able to do away with it. Fortunately for us, the vaccine is produced in Ghana here by uh, uh, Emmanuel, Dr. Emmanuel Kujo and his team at Pont Tamale Veterinary College. So we have enough, we don't have problem. But the immunity lasts for one year. Sometimes people stand on their beliefs and they don't know that this is science we are talking about. And so if you, you, you educate them, they will still not take it. But there's the need for them to change their habits. Unless it happens to them before they realize that what we are saying is true. So go to approved areas from the markets where uh, meat have been taken 
inspected and then transported from the abattoirs or slaughterhouses to the meat, to the shop. So go there and purchase your meat. But if you go and do your thing some way that nobody has an idea of, then you are putting yourself in danger. One of the world's most common artificial sweeteners is said to be declared a possible carcinogen next month by a leading global health body. That's what two sources familiar with the process told Reuters. Could drinking diet sodas, chewing gum and eating yogurt lead to cancer? The World Health Organization is set to label aspartame, an artificial sweetener found in these products, a possible cancer risk. Discovered in 1965 by an American chemist and approved by the FDA nine years later, aspartame is about 200 times sweeter than regular table sugar. It has almost zero calories, so it became popular with increasingly diet-conscious consumers. Noah Pramsma is a nutrition education coordinator with the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Um, unfortunately, in this case, as you dig a little deeper, you realize that sometimes uh, something like a diet soda might not quite be the health food that uh, we might have hoped. Food companies now need to decide whether to fight back against the labeling, ignore it, or find alternative sweeteners to use. However, recent recipe tweaks by soft drinks giant PepsiCo demonstrate the struggle of balancing health concerns with taste. PepsiCo removed aspartame from sodas in 2015 only to bring it back a year later and then remove it again in 2020. We do see you know, the big soda manufacturers like Pepsi and Coke uh, changing their formula over time. Now this takes time because you can't just say, hey, we're gonna replace one sweetener with another. Taste is what drives the majority of uh, the sales with one manufacturer over another. Reuters sources say the International Agency for Research on Cancer, an arm of the WHO, will list aspartame as a possible carcinogen in July, putting it in the same category as lead and some pesticides. However, the IARC has two more serious categories, probably carcinogenic and carcinogenic. The latter category includes tobacco and alcohol. Personal health monitoring is coming to the most private of places, the toilet. Matt Dibble looks at new devices that track human waste. Each day, vast amounts of valuable health information are flushed down toilets. Stanford School of Medicine's Sung Min Park says there is an opportunity to improve health by closely monitoring human waste. Here's a prototype that we work on. Park is developing a smart toilet that can gather visual information about a user's stool and send it to healthcare providers. And we're looking at those excreta with uh, computer vision and artificial intelligence to tell the early de uh, disease de uh, detection or even prevention of disease. The camera is located right behind this housing here. Park is working with South Korean manufacturer Izen to develop the first consumer version, which will be an add-on to an existing toilet, with the capability to send basic health and nutrition advice to a user's phone. Park says future versions could monitor many conditions and even detect early signs of cancer. Uscan, a device from French company Withings, samples urine. Urine is an amazing source of health information. Uh, urine contains up to 3,000 chemical compounds. The system uses replaceable cartridges with enough tests for 90 days. A tiny pump is heat activated and delivers drops of urine to a test strip. Which will react with urine and, and generate a color change, which we detect with an optical sensor. Test results appear on the app within minutes. Cartridges for monitoring fertility and nutrition will be available first. Tech is coming to the toilet, but it remains to be seen if users are ready to welcome these innovations into their most private routines. Matt Dibble for VOA News, Palo Alto, California. That's our show for today. For more health news, wellness tips, and medical breakthroughs, stay connected to Voice of America at voaafrica.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Lenore Moudou. Until next time, stay well and strive to make every day a healthy day.